All right, we've got John here and we'll get started with Jesse Cohen. Hey, John, uh, we spoke, I don't know, it feels like a couple weeks ago about Mikey Asimont and uh, how difficult he was to play against for other teams tonight, not just the Gordial hat trick, but the natural hat trick in the third to get you the game winning goal. Um, obviously a huge game for him, huge game for your team. I'm curious from a coaching standpoint, is, it, is a singular performance like that from a guy with more than one season in the AHL, is that something you can translate into a coaching message for the guys in their first year? Well, I, I would agree. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a complex question and one that I think I can I can answer with the idea that that Mikey it gives every single thing he has into being his best, uh, and he wants it um, as much if if not more than anybody else. And so um, to see him to see him get rewarded uh, is is outstanding. And I, I he puts in so much work and he just wants it so bad. Um, so it's, it is, it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it's inspiring to see, frankly, because there, there'd be a lot of ways where he, he could s sort of start to maybe, um, you know, maybe, maybe cheat the game a little bit, or, you know, just try to try to, uh, do things on offense. Um, that would be a little bit, you know, putting our, putting the team at risk, stretching out and, uh, from the defensive zone, but he, he's, uh, he's bought into, into what we're, uh, what we're selling and his, his play is, is, is so strong every night and his passion for the game is, uh, is just outstanding. And so um, really, really happy for Mikey. Uh, Bokwe Mama also got in a fight tonight. Um, it's just top of mind because of what happened in New York today. I'm just curious in your personal view, how much room is there still left in the game for a guy with that particular skill set? Yeah, I, it's, it's interesting. I know, uh, that society is shifting a little bit out of that mode. Um, but when you're, when you're a hockey player, you're on a hockey team and you, you don't have that toughness, you don't have that, that pack mentality as a group. And then the, the ability to back it up, because at the end of the day, it, it, that's, it, it, you are, it is going to come to a head. It is going to boil over, uh, in our sport, I, I believe for forever, um, that, that the, the players have to police themselves on the ice and, and you, you better have a team, um, I, I, Mark Messier had an interesting quote today about it. You got to be able to win in the streets and in the alleys. Uh, and that, uh, I think that means you, if I'm interpreting his quote, uh, that you have to be able to convert on your skill plays and present um, all the, all the right, the proper items. But then uh, if you get back into a corner, you better, you better be able to claw your way out with the right, with, with the right guys. And so there's a, there's a lot of avenues to be tough. Um, but there's, there's no doubt in my brain that, you, you have to have that, uh, that, that team toughness, that pack mentality and, and guys that'll guys will do anything for each other. Last one for me. Uh, last time we spoke after a goals rain game, you said that you thought that the team should have had a better record against San Diego this season. Um, this is a game you had to come back uh, from two down in the third period. Is this a game you felt like you guys quote unquote should have won? <laughs> Let's just put it this way. Uh, JF Berube uh, kept, slammed that door shut there at, at four two. And, uh, it could have, it, it certainly could have got out of hand there in the second. So, um, we need, we need to bring a, a more complete effort and, and i liked our start, but I thought we got, we got lost there, uh, in about the middle 30 minutes, I would say wasn't, wasn't our strongest, uh, strongest, uh, games, but then, you know, true to form, we, I thought, I thought controlled the third period pretty well there with a, with a solid 20. So, Maybe that game was a split 50 50, but uh, they, they were, they were good tonight. And then they were a determined team, you know, after uh, the, the, uh, the loss they encountered there uh, last weekend. So, um, you know, good job by them. All right. Thanks, John. Next up is John Hoven. Hey, Robo, I, I, questions on a couple of individual performances in a moment, but first wanted to just talk at a sort of a higher level. What was the more important narrative coming into the game? Was, was it, the fact that they were that San Diego was coming off of that, you know, that big loss, or the fact that you guys were coming home after such a successful road trip, and you know, sometimes you have a, a trap game, your first game back at home. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting way to phrase it. I I would so in the prior earlier in the week we talked about the, our successes and how we need to make sure that we we appreciate them and acknowledge them and also use that as a you know a bouncing board going forwards that we're 
that we can, we believe that we have the team in here that can go into a, a place like Colorado and win three straight, which doesn't happen very often is my understanding. So that was more earlier in the week. And then kind of our, our, you know, lasting thoughts here today was that um, that's a, that's a, that's a, a class franchise down there and they, they, they didn't have their best performance and there was going to be uh, there was going to be an answer from them. And also, uh, they, they, you know, sort of, they moved around some personnel. They, they injected not only, uh, some hungry players in that lineup, but then they combined with the, the hungry team that was, I'm sure challenged by a very good coaching staff. So uh, yeah, that was kind of the last thought today is that, well, while we, we have to have confidence in what we do, we, you, you better respect your opponent you better respect the situation. And I thought we might've, might not have had that proper level of respect. I hope that we learn that every game's got to, you have to have that. But, um, you know, I, I'll say this in a game where it looked like they, we didn't have it. And we, and it honestly, wasn't, wasn't going to click for us. Uh, that's another, that's another feather in our cap to know that, Hey, we can, we can make some plays when the, when, when it's crunch time and when it's on the line and, uh, that, you know, that's, um, that's a sign of a great team too. And, you know, you don't want to make too much out of what's coming here uh, with the postseason tournament and whatnot. Obviously, it's not fighting for a Calder Cup like a lot of people would would have would have wished for. But at the same time, do you do you sort of get that feeling? Do you, do you feel any momentum right now when you think back to where the team was earlier in the year that m- maybe this team is starting to peak at just the right time? Well, there's a, there's a belief and it's earned uh, for, from these guys. They they've uh, they went from that's a game that frankly a month ago we we don't win um and we don't we're not we're not confident in our skill level to be able to make make the plays there to to get us back into the game um so in that regard i do i do feel you know you look at how the game against bakersfield a couple of weeks ago the saturday game there um and then and then the sunday that that little series there in, in baco um those those are all things that will that will remind the players of as we uh, embark on this 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 playoff uh, structure uh, what, this postseason that we're going to have and uh, confidence is paramount and and belief is paramount and so we'll um, we'll be sure to bolster all those items. And I know I asked you a little bit about uh, call ups here uh, a few weeks ago and you had said that you know you'd leave that up to Kings management and whatnot but we are getting down here to kind of the last couple of days you know. Uh, Byfield probably playing in his sixth game, and then there'll be room for one more call up. Kapari gets the first goal tonight. Then Akil Thomas has a goal as well. Uh, do, you know, do you just do you get the sense that these guys are are making their final push to to be included in that conversation? Well, that was that was the message that I had for those guys. You know, after during our bye week, is to you know, it's if you get the call up this this year, um, you know, for Akil. Uh, or or Kapari, you know, or, or Turk, whatever it doesn't, it doesn't it already. They all, any one of these guys, um, to me, is in the mix for it. Um, you know, you look at Asimov's performance. Like everybody, everybody's pounding down the door, and that was that was something that we talked about the bye week. Not only as a group, um, but with individuals, is to is to leave no doubt in, in management's mind. The people that are ultimately making the decisions that that this is the type of player you are, and this is who you want want them to believe in and so you've got you've got these 10 games to to solidify not only your spot on this team but but impact the decision making process for your future and so uh, it was a good good ch- good opportunity for a reset and one that uh, I hope we I hope we get to visit um, in future seasons with with Ontario is that there are a couple of reset moments um, so that guys guys can kind of get their their minds and bodies back wrapped around their this uh, you know just very difficult uh, schedule. Thanks, Robo. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet, Mayor. All right. Looks like that's it. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, guys.